about a week ago, I got an alert for one million naira. My friend, James, he had sent it to me. I looked on my phone and I saw that James had sent me a million naira. And the topic there was, use this to top up your phone, put credit on your phone. I was very happy, like James, I did not expect this of you. Something, something good must have happened to you. Then my phone started ringing. It was James calling me over and over again. I picked up the phone. He told me, Mark, please send me that money back. It was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> you are not going to use a million naira to top up your phone, please. I tried arguing with him a little bit. He said, no. I sent the money back. That entire transaction took about 20 minutes. I studied in Germany. If this were done in Germany, the entire thing would have taken about two days. In Germany, they do not have instant bank transfers. They do not have bank alerts. You cannot see notifications on your phone that you have received any form of money. But we have all that in Nigeria here. The Nigerian banking technology is far better than the German banking technology. And why is that? It's because we just made it. Like this technology is two or three years old, or okay, maybe five years old. The German technology was built in the 70s. It's completely different. Like it's built on legacy systems and it's not half as good as what we have in Nigeria. So what happened? Like why is it better? It's better because we didn't have to consider that space. We didn't have to make things compatible with software that was built in the 70s. And that's what I want to talk about today. The technology that Africa can create that is basically going to skip a generation. Now, basically, there's a lot that can be done here in Africa. There are a lot of things that are not working at all. And we may be tempted to want to catch up with what others have. We may be tempted to say, you know what, like, let's have what, what is available in the West already, right? But the fact that we do not have all these things actually creates an opportunity for us. It creates an opportunity for us to create something that does not exist and that is better than what any other person has. For example, if money were invented for the first time today, how would it look like? Would we actually go around printing money on pieces of paper and then we take all those pieces of paper and give it out to everybody in the world and say, you know what, like, hey, start distributing this and you'll start getting things for it. We probably would not. We would come up with a system like M-Pesa. That's what one of the, the most um, used forms of currency in Kenya right now. And basically, everybody uses SMS and they, uses their, they use their mobile phone to pay for every single good that they have. This is a far better form of money. It's a way that is very modern. And it's a way that basically in the rest of the world would not happen because they, they, all their money systems are fine. They have banks everywhere. In Kenya, they don't have all that. So they invented an alternative method using the, using the mobile phones. In the exact same way here in Nigeria, we never created landlines. We never went about like putting copper underneath all the cables and connecting everywhere. Rather, we skipped an entire generation and now we are all using mobile phones. And the rest of the world is catching up. They are slowly letting go of their landlines. Now, for us, if we think in that manner, what we can say is this. Everything that is available for us to fix, let's not play catch up. Let's not think about copying what the West has or what has been done elsewhere. Rather, let's think about skipping a generation and then inventing the things that nobody else has yet invented, but that are possible with modern technology. Now, it sounds difficult, so I'm going to highlight it with a few industries, exactly how this could be possible. For example, in the energy sector, we all know, like every day, you know, like we know this in Nigeria very well, that energy is a problem. A lot of us, like, you know, we don't, we don't have light and so on. And that's for us in the cities. It's even worse out there in the villages. Like they definitely do not have any power. And this multiplies itself across the rest of the continent. So the, the natural idea or what one would think about is, let's build a bunch of maybe gas powered, uh, power plants, and then let's lay a lot of cables all the way to every single village in Africa. Realistically, is this the best way to go about it? By the time we have done all that, the rest of the world is going to be using renewable energy. You know, and by the time we have built all those gas plants, there won't be any more gas. We should not be doing it that way. An idea we could do, solar trees. 
Now, think about having modular solar plants that are based on, that, are, that get their electricity directly from the sun. Instead of us laying a cable all the way to every single village, what about we simply plant a tree that can generate enough power for that village? And people can use that and, you know, they, you could have battery slots in there where people drop it in during the day to charge up their batteries. In the evening, they take it home. You could use the very same plant to pump up water and then use that to distribute water to the village. So instead of just the same way that we are not laying cables to come and put landlines in every single village, we can actually make electricity individual and only for that village. People could use that, you know, with the batteries that they get, they can basically power all their, all their devices in the evening. And that's, that can be the step, the in-between step, before we actually simply lay wires from each of those plants to, to the individual houses. And this is, this is renewable. This is basically where the rest of the world is going. So if we invest in that now, we'll be ahead of them. By the time they reach there, we'd say, hey, we did that 10 years ago. Another industry, transportation. So it's the exact same problem we have in transportation. We are out there like anybody that's traveled knows it's really difficult, all those roads, we are building them. And by the time we have reached the end of the road, the beginning of the road has spoiled again. And we're doing that only between the major cities. What same problem, how do we do it to all the little villages? And how do we solve all the transportation problem in the cities? Like, you know, moving people around and so on. Now, um, a standard solution for this is let's build trains. To build a train is an extremely expensive proposition. And by the time we have actually built all those trains and laid all those tracks, maybe in the West they are now using flying cars or something like that. They have moved on, you know. I have an idea. Everybody knows the keke, right? What about if we combine modern technology with the tricycles that we are using here? We make the K car a self-driving keke. Sounds a little bit strange. What we can do is this. We simply redesign it so it looks like a mini train platform and then we add the self-driving technology so that these things do not actually need anybody to drive them but it's simply a seat that somebody can sit inside. And we make them combine with each other so that you can have like a whole train. You've got 50 of them following each other and they go stop somewhere, they pick up passengers and they go on. And instead of having train tracks, we simply have a narrow pathway by the side of the road. It's built on existing infrastructure. And you drive, you, you know, you go in there, you, you walk into the thing, it takes you where you want. And even better, you can actually detach it and it takes you home. You know, so instead of having the trains like they have elsewhere that you have to get off and then start walking home, you simply stay in your train track, you know, you exit it, it drops you at home, it goes back and joins the rest of the train. This is very viable now. We could actually do it and the technology to make all this exists. Next industry, education. Same problem, same issue. We want to go out there, we want to build a world-class education for everybody in Nigeria. How realistic is this? When will we ever achieve it? I mean, we can keep on trying, like we'll probably um, get some kind of education, maybe in 30 years, but where will everybody else be? Where will the rest of the world be? All this investment that we're doing in education, we could do it in a different way. And I have something to suggest here again. Virtual reality. This very cutting edge, this is what people are doing right now. You simply wear a big pair of goggles and it looks exactly like you're somewhere else. What about we take our secondary schools and the people there, instead of going to go and build schools every single place, we say, stay right where you are, go to your class, but you wear virtual reality and you could, you could be studying in Harvard, you could be studying in Oxford, all the very best teachers in the world, you could be having that very same education so that the people that grow up here do not have in any way any worse educational background than somebody that had all the opportunity of going to Stanford or Harvard or MIT, right? The cost of investing in building those buildings and teaching teachers would probably make this viable. We could do this right now. The next and final industry I'm going to talk about, medicine. Building a hospital is very expensive. Um, my state governor just built a hospital, cost a few billions of naira, and the hospital is still not working. That's just one. 
there are this we could replicate this everywhere in Nigeria we could keep on spending a billion naira in every single place or we could simply decide we are going to invest in a new form of technology I recently saw the list of the 10 uh, the 10 highest valued companies in America thing number eight or so is a blood diagnosis company it's a company that simply takes blood and then it diagnoses it in a fast way diagnosing illnesses from people's blood it's becoming very cheap it's becoming very reliable and it's something that can easily be technology enabled now we could take that and we could put it into a little box for the people in the villages or where else that do not have easy access they stick their finger in there's a little pin prick and it can tell them right on their phone their smartphones which a lot of them do hey you know what you have got malaria you have got typhoid you have got any one of those easily diagnosable diseases and he can start getting treated then let's say it's something more complicated something that cannot be diagnosed without lab equipment typically how would it work right now it probably wouldn't that person will just keep getting sicker and sicker and sicker then at some point you know he would die of witchcraft <laughs> um, so my salute my suggestion here we have something that Amazon has already prototyped the drone doctor basically he gives his his blood in there and with a drone comes in picks it up and takes it back to the central lab where all this can be analyzed and that person can actually know what his problem is if it's something that's easily fixable and a lot of diseases are that way the drone can actually go back and deliver him his medicine considering how widespread we are how many people are in so many remote locations a solution like this would help a lot of lives in Amazon in the US Amazon is using this to deliver video games deliver all kinds of things how much more important would it be that we can deliver medicine using drones the technology to build every single one of these ideas that I've mentioned exists. If we were to take the, mo the money that we're spending now on catch-up technologies and invest in these new technologies, we would be inventing things that the rest of the world would come into us to buy. That is what we should be looking to do. The future of technology is not in us trying to play catch-up. It's not in us doing what others have done and doing it badly. The future of technology for Africa is us basically looking at the things that we lack and using each of those gaps as an opportunity for us to invent something that we can use to leapfrog over the rest of the world. I believe that looking at what is happening now, that is exactly what's going to happen. All of us, when we all have this idea, when we know that we must, we must create something, something that bridges the gap, something that is not old something that is has only become possible now then we'll be creating it will become the word that this is african technology so it is cutting edge and so it is the best that exists in the world right now thank you